That was a little much. I'm not leaving yet. We take it all back. <laughs> I, I, you may know that I'm not in this service very often. The, I call it the rock and roll service. It's a little loud for me, I'm old. But I don't know if you've noticed, but the, the longer we go, more people come in. Maybe if I preach long enough, we'll just fill up all these pews. <laughs> Please turn with me uh, in your Bibles or uh, on the side screens to the book of First Peter, the epistle. First Peter chapter four, verses eight through 10. Hear these words. Above all, maintain, const maintain constant love for one another for love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. The Lord bless you in the reading and the hearing of God's holy word. The author of 1 Peter writes that the role of Christians is to serve one another in whatever gifts that we've been given. And whoever speaks must do so as in speaking the very words of God. Then he writes that we're to serve one another like good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God. What's that like? to be good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Robert Fulgham in his book, It Was on Fire When I Laid Down, tells of being in a seminar with Dr. Alexander Papaderas. Papaderas had set up an institute following World War II where he brought together the Germans and the Cretans who during the war were enemies. During the seminar, someone asked him the question, What's the meaning of life? Papaderas took out his billfold. He fished through the leather and he pulled out a small round mirror. And he said, when I was a small child during the war, we were very poor. We lived in a remote village. One day I was out on the road and I discovered that there was a German motorcycle that had been wrecked and there were pieces of mirror there on the road. He tried to put them together, but, but that was impossible. So he took the largest piece of mirror, he said, this one, by rubbing it on a stone, I've made it round through the, through the years. I like to play with the mirror, he said. I found out that it was a toy that was real fun. I could, I could take the mirror and I could shine it into dark places where there wasn't any light and I could make it light. I could reflect light into those dark places. And so he went about doing that, shining it into deep holes crevices, dark closets, became a game for him, he said, to shine the light in inaccessible places. He said, I, I kept the mirror, uh, played with it, uh, fiddled with it uh, through the years, the challenge of continuing the game. Then he said, as I became a man, I came to understand that it wasn't just a child's game, that it was a metaphor for his life. He said, I came to understand that I'm not the light or the source of the light, but light, truth, understanding, knowledge is there. And it will only shine in dark places if I reflect it. He said, I'm a fragment of a mirror whose design I and shape I do not know. Nevertheless, what I have I can reflect into dark places of this world, into the places of the hearts of people and change some things 
in some folks. Perhaps others will see it and do it likewise. He said, this is what my life is about. Maybe this is the answer to the question, what it's like to be good stewards of the manifold grace of God. You see, we as Christians are to, to mirror grace that God pours out upon us. Like doc, Dr. Papadaris, we don't produce the light that's God's grace. God does that. God extends his grace to us continuously. And I believe that our role as Christians is to reflect that light, the light of grace, mirror grace, if you will, into the lives of others. So what is God's grace? It's kind of an elusive concept, but I think of it in this way. It's the love with which God loves us. It's the mercy that God extends to us even though we don't deserve it. It's the compassion that God offers us in every situation we're in. It's the forgiveness that God offers us when we ask. It's the acceptance that God offers to us. Acceptance just like we are without us having to change. And it's free. So we as Christians are called on to channel God's grace to others by doing things that build up their lives. It's by loving them, by affirming them, encouraging them, accepting them just like they are, by forgiving them, by showing mercy and compassion. That's easy to say, but it's a tall order and oftentimes difficult to do. But first, we have to be aware of God's grace upon our lives. We have to be willing to accept God's grace. Some people feel that they're not worthy of God's grace. Um, they're not good enough. Well, no, none of us are good enough to receive God's grace. We don't earn it. If we had to be good enough, none of us would qualify. It's free, freely given by God. If love is a part of God's grace, what's love like? Victoria Kubisak in the Upper Room Devotional Magazine wrote this. She wrote, the day with my four-year-old daughter had been particularly trying. I was tired and felt like a failure. When I looked in on her before going to bed myself, I stood there for a while watching her sleep peacefully. And while breathing in the fresh scent of her, I thought of the trials of the day and my love for her. Earlier, I'd lost my patience, been frustrated. My frustration, however, never diminished my love for my daughter. I gently stroked her face and whispered, I will always love you. Tomorrow will be a better day. Then Victoria went ahead to write, it suddenly occurred to me that God loves me in that kind of a way, like I love my daughter, but immeasurably more than we human beings can understand or, or comprehend. I'm a child of God. Even when I frustrate God and fail to listen, God's love endures for me. I'll make mistakes, but God will always smile on me with unending love. And I imagine God looking down on me as I sleep and saying, Victoria, I will always love you. Tomorrow will be a better day. That's what God's love is like, I think. Loving us with an unending love, a love that we don't earn. In spite of our mistakes, in spite of messing up things in our lives, 
God still loves us. And I think that's what we're called upon, how we're called upon to love other people. God's grace. Forgiveness is a part of God's grace. What's forgiveness like? Anita McIntosh relates this. A friend, friend's granddaughter asked her to uh, draw a horse with the granddaughter on the horse. Well, the friend was an artist, but she confessed, I've, I've never drawn a horse. The granddaughter said, well, you know, it's pretty easy. All you need is a, a piece of paper, a pencil, and a good eraser. <laughs> Anita goes ahead and relates, I believe that God has a good eraser. When I repent, God is continually erasing what I do wrong. When I fail, God rescues me with an eraser ready and shows me the right path. God is always ready to forgive us when we repent and ask his forgiveness sincerely. And we're called on to forgive others in a similar way. So I believe that our role as Christians is to mirror the grace that God pours out upon us continuously. The love, the forgiveness, the compassion, the mercy, the acceptance. And like a mirror, we can reflect the light of God's grace into dark places where we find people. Not to shame them, not to judge or condemn them, but to help them heal. Dr. Papadaris mentioned that he used his little mirror to shine it in deep holes, crevices, dark closets. Have you ever run across people living in deep holes, caught in crevices, hiding in dark closets? As we're sensitive and aware of others and their situation, we will find people in those kinds of places. We will come in contact with people who, for example, are depressed, who are in despair, with feelings of low self-worth, struggling with addiction, living in shame from something that they had done, grieving a significant loss. People living in those kind of situations need to know that God's grace abounds for them and is available. And so how do these people find out about God's grace? How does God's grace reach them? Through people like you and me who reflect God's grace upon them as they live in those dark places. Knowing that only by the grace of God we would be in a situation similar to theirs. So how might we shine the light of God's grace into the lives of others? One way I think of is uh, when we say to a person, hey, how you doing? And they say, oh, all right, I guess. Rather than just saying, well, have a good day and go on. Perhaps to stop and say, is that something you'd like to talk about? Like to share with me? And if they would like to share it with you, to listen, to listen with understanding, compassion, to be available. There are many ways that we can mirror God's grace into the lives of others. As the author of 1 Peter wrote, to be good stewards of the manifold grace of God. A good many of you already do this. You've made it a part of your lives. That's what you understand that it means to be a Christian, is to love people in that way. I simply am giving you a name for it, mirroring grace. You perhaps have not called it that before. There are others of you that maybe this is a new and a fresh idea of something that you could do to mirror God's grace. You know about God's grace. You've accepted God's grace and you have the ability to shine it upon others. Centuries ago, the native people along what we call the Hudson River 
had their own name for the river. It was called uh, Mahukunatuk, which means the river that flows both ways. When the tide from the Atlantic Ocean would come in, uh, the water would flow north. When the tide went out, it would flow south. And the lesson here for us is that what flows into our lives from God is meant to flow out from it. We're to have in our heart a river that flows both ways. God's grace flows in. It's meant to flow out. We're called on to mirror God's grace into dark places where we find people. Some years ago, when a stretch of land in, in London was cleared for a building of a new highway, the earth lay exposed to the light and air for a full year before work began. Within that time, a strange sight came about that drew the attention of naturalists. Over most of the ground, the, the sun hadn't shined nor the rain fallen since the Romans had sailed up the Thames River and beached on the strand. When the sunlight poured onto the rays of the uncovered soil, many new flowers sprang into bloom. Some were unknown in England. They were, they were plants that the Romans had brought with them. Hidden away in the darkness, lying dormant under a mass of bricks and mortar, they seemed to have died. But when reached by the light and moisture, they flowered and blossomed in new beauty. In a similar way, as we mirror the light of God's grace, shining it upon people in dark places, they will flower and blossom to newness of life. Let me say again, I believe that our role as Christians is to mirror the grace of God that shines upon our lives, reflecting it upon others. And I invite you to mirror God's grace in that way. As a way for you to remember about mirroring God's grace as you leave the sanctuary, you'll be given a little small mirror to take home with you. And I hope that you will put it in a place where each day you see the mirror and are reminded that you have the opportunity to shine the light of God's grace into dark places. Praise be to God. Let us pray. Oh Lord God, we thank you for the grace that you shine upon our lives. We pray that you would lead us and show us how to shine that grace into the lives of others. Those that are struggling with various aspects of life. Help us to be your servants. We pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.